You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. We are talking to Jerry Corley. He is the founder of the Stand Up Comedy Clinic, and he's a comedy teacher. He's been in comedy for about 25 years. Jerry, it's a pleasure to have you. Thanks for having me. So you got to help me out a little bit because, as you know, this is a personal finance show, and I get a lot of flack for having uh, people who aren't personal finance experts on the show. So what do you suggest I tell people when they say, why don't you have a comedian on? Well, I, I think one of the uh, – let's go back to the – general rule of comedy there's an old saying and i think it's uh it's actually an old uh, jewish saying it is impossible to dislike somebody who makes you laugh mm -hmm. how valuable is that in business <laughs> so people so if you're in sales or you're trying to negotiate a deal and because when we laugh we actually release endorphins it's the same thing the body releases when you shoot heroin so you're actually making somebody high if they're laughing they're feeling this euphoria. And so if you walk in and you're dealing with it, you, know, you have a bid. There's three bidders that are coming in trying to get a job. Mm -hmm. And uh, you walk in, you pitch your idea. And at the same time, you're pitching it with humor, with properly uh, uh, applied humor. And the client you're trying to grab is laughing. That person physiologically, and they don't, won't even know why, they like you better. Yeah, but that could take like you like that. a full hour, whereas if you just give them a shot of heroin, that takes like 30 seconds, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would just take minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so do you train people who aren't going to be comedians? Sure. I train, uh, I've trained ministers. I've trained um, uh, who still write me today and say, man, it's done wonders for what I do. I train teachers. I train um, – uh, business people who do, who give presentations and speeches. I'd say about half my um, half my clientele, half my students, are in the professional field and don't want to be in, don't necessarily want to pursue stand up. Mm -hmm. So what what can you teach someone who's in business? Again, not to be a comedian, but so to make him better in his field. Well, if you want to, what, first of all, what I teach them is the, the, the major human laugh triggers. There are actually triggers that uh, make human beings laugh. Besides tickling, how, how do you make somebody laugh? Um, the, the, the number one element that triggers human laughter is surprise. Mm -hmm. If you could surprise somebody with what you're going to say, what they anticipate you saying, uh, you can make them laugh. Like if I told you uh, the joke about the, when I was at the hotel uh, in, in Reno, Nevada last week, I was at the Atlantis. I woke up in the hotel room and the housekeeper's banging on the door, just banging. Finally had to get up and let her out. <laughs> that surprise <laughs> is going to trigger a laugh uh, mechanism in you because you didn't anticipate it. You get this picture of the room. We've all been in a hotel room with the housekeeper banging on the door. We've always had to get up and either let her in or say, please, uh, I forgot to put up the do not disturb sign. Instead, at the last second, I change it to let her out. We can use that in almost any scenario. So um, we're saying that, that people expect of... one thing. In other words, you're leading them to expect one thing, but she give them the other. Like a financial advisor might tell his clients, you can expect to make money. And then at the last minute, <laughs> <laughs> that's not what she means, is it? Right. That's not exactly, but it is very true. And you just turned it into, uh, you just used the incongruity formula and applied that to finance. Uh -huh. uh, the incongruity formula is probably the most commonly used formula in commercially accepted comedy today, where you impose the characteristics of one thing onto another. You know, it's like when they, with the big crash, the real estate crash, and I said, this is probably the worst uh, real estate, uh, the worst crash that a financial crash we've been involved in the United States and, and since the Great Depression. I've lost, it's like a divorce. I've lost half my net worth, but I still have my wife. <laughs> so you're, you're applying, you know, finance and, and marriage together and yeah. you're making it work because, the, it, because of the incongruity formula. That's what's triggering the laughter. You go, how is it like a divorce? That's the, the here's the timing we talked about earlier when we first got on, on Skype together. And how is it like a divorce? 
And so that's where the brain is thinking. And I put that puzzle together for you. And it's almost like comedic irony in a way. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so, so if we're having a conversation about finance or about, you know, me making this big sale to you and you're laughing along the way and I'm able to impose the values of one thing onto another and trigger your laughter and you're having a good time around me, then you're going to want to buy my product because I make you feel good. And indirectly, uh, the product makes you feel good. It's just like the same reason why Budweiser or big companies use sexy ladies. GoDaddy, for example, uses, you know, the sexy models. On I wouldn't know. I've never we been there before. When we think of GoDaddy, what do we think of? Girls in bikinis. I got Internet a registry, my friend. Internet registry. That's, that's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking to Jerry Corley, who's a, uh, he's a stand-up comic, but really more than that is he's a, he's a teacher. He's been in comedy forever. He was a, a writer for Jay Leno, The Tonight Show. He's written hundreds of jokes for uh, the top comedians, guys like Chris Rock. And now you can, you can learn more about becoming a comedian, and he's really taken the, the concept and come up with a system that many, many people can apply. Jerry, I want to focus on something that you were mentioning before, which is finance and marriage, which are the two areas that I'm in. I mean, I, my <laughs> business card says that I'm a, you know, a financial advisor, but in real life, I'm a marriage counselor, and that tends to be probably at least half of what I do. And it's, it's, you know, it's, the fact is it's very serious, right? I meet with couples, and we're talking about their future, and uh, it's, you know, it's, money is certainly one of the biggest stresses that people have in their marriage. Do you think that between husbands and wives, or maybe with the help of their you know, really funny financial advisor, they can, they can come up with solutions so they can work better together on their financial issues? With humor? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, if you, if, I have a couple that actually comes into my – I have a class I run on Saturdays, and I have a couple that drive six hours in from Phoenix every Saturday to sit in my class together. and. Um, they it was part of their contract to improve their marriage and to get along better. Uh, and they were they were struggling. They were on the outs. And they said, let's do something together. Mm -hmm. And um, so they started coming to my class uh, every Saturday. And now they're writing jokes together. Hey. And uh, it's they said, man, it has totally changed our relationship. We have. You know, because he was like, well, I was trying to get her to do things that I liked her. I wanted her to do, like play golf. She hates golf. And uh, so I was like, um, you know, uh, you know, who <laughs> I just came up with a joke, but it's not appropriate for radio. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, you and, uh, so uh, I mean, it probably had something to do with Tiger Woods. Um, but uh, she, a topic, you know, I, I know that you like you. I, I saw she, you had a great she video. She loves humor and uh, he loves humor. So they said, you know, why don't we learn how to write jokes together? Mm -hmm. And now they're writing jokes together and they keep sending me these jokes that they're writing. And you know what? They're, they said, we're bonding in a way we've never bonded before because now we have a focused idea. Now we can work on exercises and joke writing exercises and how to come up with stuff. And the first one she came up with, he says, uh, she said, my mother always taught me the best way to a man's heart is through his stomach. I think the best way to a man's heart is straight through his chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I now, you know, and now they laugh at the angst they have. If little things get in their way uh, now, you know, she goes, you know, uh, if I teach one of the things I teach is the uh, irony and observation and the things we notice in in everyday situations, she says, and he said to me, you ever notice when your wife says to you, I'm going to ask you a question and you have to promise not to get mad. Mm. You know, you're in for a long night. Oh yeah. And that's so, and we all recognize that. And yeah. so they've taken their relationship and with the humor, if it's impossible to dislike somebody that makes you laugh, now they like one another. I wonder if I could apply that to dealing with, you know, difficult issues people have are budgeting. You know, you, uh, I had a client came in once. I was I was presenting the financial plan. The husband came about 15 minutes early. The, you know, they each came from work, and uh, he said, "Doug, I got to talk to you." I said, "Yeah, what's up?" He goes, "You got to, you know, when you present the plan to us, you got to give some real direction to my wife because you know I earned he earned a huge amount of money." He says, "But uh, she spends, you know, so much money. That's why we're so deep in debt." So I listened. I said, okay, you know, I got it. And uh, it turns out we sit down, and then the wife is the world's greatest shopper. Like, everything is on sale. She, he's the one who's going out spending tons of money. 
And he just, you know, saw it the other way, right? He just thought that she was the spender. And when you actually look at the, when you actually look at the books, you go, okay, but you saw, he saw that as a necessity. Right. Yeah. No, he you doesn't, know? he doesn't waste money, you know, on, uh, on the lunches and, you know, the trips. He said, I, I, I needed that, I needed that, uh, that new Sorry. guitar, the new computer, the new laptop or the new iPad. I need that. That's a necessity. You know, her makeup or her, uh, you know, Therapy. whatever she's getting, her iPad, that's not necessary. So I had a husband came in once and, uh, I, I, now that I've been in the business longer, I insist that the spouses come together to financial planning because it's not about money. It's about lifestyle. And uh, But this was before I realized how important this was. And so uh, it was just the husband. We're going over the budget, and they were way overspending. And I said, uh, I said, you know, you got to cut. So he just looks through, and he starts cutting everything that's hers. And he goes, oh, the first thing I'm cutting is her therapy. <laughs> 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 Yeah, the marriage is now doomed. Yeah, that, was, that was your only I can't hope. give her a place to complain about me. So can what people I who are... Think, I remember I was in a relationship and um, my significant other would go out shopping and she went out for sandals. She needed sandals because it was getting to summer and she didn't have any sandals that fit. <laughs> so she comes home with a, a jacket, uh, a, a brand, a three new outfits, and the first thing she walks in the door is, Jerry, you have no idea how much money I saved us. Yeah. <laughs> this was all on sale. Don't you get it? And I thought, wow, you went out for sandals and you spent $600 on an outfit. You saved us so much money. And so, so one time I was in Thailand doing a show and um, uh, these two hookers came up to me and were trying to solicit me. And I said, no, 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 no. Ladies, I'm a married man. I'm very happy. And they started at, they said $300 uh, for both of us. And they, I said, ladies, I, you have work to do. I'm just going to be wasting your time. Finally, they came down. She goes, she goes, okay, $50 for an hour for both of us. And I thought, I can't wait to get on the phone tomorrow to my, to my wife and say, honey, you have no, you have no <laughs> idea how much money I saved us. <laughs> and just for that point, I might have, I might have indulged, but I didn't, you know, because uh, so really, to pay for that, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. I guess it must be so hard to be a comedian. It's, you know, you, you have so many things you want to say, like the wife who said to her husband, baby, do you love me just because I inherited so much money from my father? And he says, listen, sweetheart, I'd love you no matter who you inherited the money from. <laughs> <laughs> That's things, the truth. All the things not to say. So do you have to actually be funny in order to, to really develop this skill or can you know can can you teach it's, someone who's it's easier it's easier if you if you have a tendency. Let's face it, some people are more naturally um, talented in the humor area and usually because they had early exposure to it when they were younger. Um, however, if you have a brain in your head, even half a brain. Uh, you can learn the concepts. I am actually working with a student who's brain damaged. He has no corpus callosum in his brain. So it doesn't, there's no separation between left brain and right brain. And plus he had some head trauma when he was in Vietnam. But he came to me, he said, I've always wanted to do stand-up comedy. And I thought to myself at first, oh my goodness, this is a completely lost cause. Um, but he wanted, and he was paying for the sessions. So um, I got together with him and I realized, wait a second, this guy this is going to be a great challenge for me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see if I can teach him to recognize the, the structures of comedy, the 12 major comedy structures, and see if he can learn to apply them. And he started to do it. Uh, but his problem was he couldn't memorize his act. He just couldn't. He could only memorize us like a sentence at a time. He said, I, Jerry, I just can't memorize it. And uh, so I built in something. I wrote all his jokes on cards, on three by five cards, and I put them in a shirt pocket. And I said, okay, Lee, the only thing you have to memorize is this. Um, hello, my name is Lee. And before I get started, I have to tell you I have, uh, that's all you have to remember. He goes, I can do that. I said, go ahead, go. He goes, what was I supposed to say? And I said, uh, <laughs> and I go, he goes, I know, I'm just kidding. He goes, uh, before I get started, I have to tell you I have, uh, I said, now reach into your pocket and pull out those cards. Uh -huh. He goes, okay. And he looks at the line and says, memory problems. Oh because I was in Vietnam. So I have to read my jokes from my note cards. I hope you don't mind. And what does the audience do at that point? They're with them. They empathize with them yeah. and they applaud. That's amazing. Amazing. And then he just read the jokes from the card, got off with a standing ovation. Um, but he learned, it took about a year 
of uh, working with this guy once or twice a month. I'd have a private with him and um, just teaching him the structure, sending him home with homework, helping him identify what a, you know, how to shatter an assumption, doing cliche work. Cliche work is great because if you think about it, we all know the ending to a cliche, right? You have, like we did with that knock-knock joke. Mm -hmm. We know the ending. If we change the ending, knock-knock, come in, suddenly it's funnier because you anticipated <laughs> who's there. Who's there? Who's there? Um, so with cliche work, you can do cliche work all day long and come up with funny. All right. Jerry, I hate to say it, but we are just about out of time. It's, it's a pleasure talking to you and very funny. We've been talking to Jerry Corley, who is the founder of the Stand Up Comedy Clinic. In the last couple of seconds, just tell me, how can people find you and find out more what you're doing? They can come to my web website at standupcomedyclinic.com and, um, and, and look at the blog there. There's tons of free information. There's actually a one-of-a-kind joke writing video that actually walks you through how to write jokes. Which I have seen myself, and I really enjoyed it too. Jerry Corley, standupcomedyclinic.com. Stand up Thanks so much for your time. You got it. Thanks a lot, Doug. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.